Truck drivers, what's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Not sure if this story is creepy but it's definitely scary. My father was a truck driver in East Africa in the 80s and early 90s. During the years leading up to the Rwandan genocide, my father was passing through Rwanda. He reached a checkpoint and was forcibly removed from his truck at gunpoint. Apparently he looked like he belonged to the Tutsi tribe and they put him in a cage with other Tutsi prisoners. He tried communicating that he isn't Rwandan but no one spoke the same language as him. Every night they would take about five people from the cage and slaughter them in front of him. After the third night, he saw a man that spoke a little bit of Swahili, which my dad spoke, and told him that he's not Rwandan and showed him his ID. Somehow that guy got him out and he was handed the keys to his truck and was on his way. I was driving through eastern Washington on some state roads. There were no rest stops or cities but I had done the route enough to know there were these massive dirt areas every 40 miles where you could park safely away from the road. I decided to call it a night and closed my blinds and laid down to watch something on my phone. After roughly an hour I hear someone try to open the driver's side door. I haven't heard any vehicles on the road the whole time I'm parked but I get up to peek out the curtains. As I'm looking out into the blackness of the driver's side window I hear them try the passenger side door. I peek down from the top of the curtain but can't see anything so I start the truck and kick on the lights. I'm fairly freaked out at this point so I'm still not opening the curtains but peeking through gaps. Nothing, nobody is standing near either of my doors or parked within sight line. I take a deep breath and close the sleeper curtains too, because for some reason that's going to make things better right? After laying back down and convincing myself that something blew against the truck and it only sounded like the doors, it was fairly windy outside and a lot of flat ground. I hear what sounds like someone trying to pry open the vents on the sleeper. The door handles start clicking again and the truck starts shifting like someone is climbing on it. I hit the little alarm button in the sleeper hoping to spook them off but it does nothing but add to the noise of door handles, fingers tapping on windows and chassis, and the hiss of air coming out of the suspension. Then suddenly it stops. A few moments where I can only hear myself breathing and my heart pounding before I hear another truck approach and then drive by. I spent the next few hours waiting for whatever it was to come back but it never did. In the morning I couldn't find any footprints or damage to my truck but on every window were tiny human looking handprints, like a toddler had licked their hand and stuck it to my window over and over. Not a trucker, but I had a college teammate from Miami tell a story that he swears on to this day. He and his girlfriend were making the drive to Naples late night, on a two-lane road through the Everglades and had been in a line of cars behind an 18-wheeler for multiple miles. She fell asleep and he was surfing for something to listen to on the radio. Only one station came in clearly enough to be tolerable, so he gave it a listen. The DJ came on and said something along the lines of the stars are extra bright in the Everglades tonight. If you're driving through there, pull off and take a look. He said he normally wouldn't even think of it, but for some reason felt compelled to that night. He woke up his girlfriend, she was annoyed and didn't want to but he convinced her it would be worth it. They stopped and just took in the stars for 5 to 10 minutes. He said it was the most amazing sky he's ever seen. They get back on the road and drive another few minutes and come across a massive accident. The truck they were following had jackknifed and took out a handful of vehicles that were following. He said there are multiple fatalities, but I've never been able to find a new story about it to confirm, probably would have been in 2005-ish. They most likely would have been involved if not for that random DJ on the only radio station to come in that night. My dad drove a truck between Edinburgh and London and tells this story often. He was driving down the motorway and looked to his right, saw a woman with a mistrunch bull bun, as he describes it, staring at him with a terrified expression from a car next to him. Before he really knows how to react the car pulls off at the next exit and my dad, although shaken, carries on. About half an hour later a different car with a different driver pulls alongside my dad, with the same woman in the passenger seat, with the same expression on her face. My dad thinks fuck this and plans to pull into the next services to report as even if it's nothing, misunderstanding, better to be safe than sorry, right? Anyway the car disappears before he can get any details, plates etc, and he thinks there is no point calling the police with no details so he carries on driving. Literally about 4 hours later, almost in London, Yet another car pulls alongside him with the same woman, same Miss Trunchbull hair, same terrified expression, except this time she appears to be screaming at my dad through the window, so my dad pulls over into a lay-by and calls the police. Apparently they have received three other calls about the same woman, car in the same area in the last few minutes. 
It is unfortunately anticlimactic as he never heard anything more about it but he didn't see her again and although he kept an eye on the news, didn't see anything about it. Hopefully it's just a giant coincidence. Who knows? The repeating nature of this one reminds me of one weird story back when I was in high school. It was summer and my dad's birthday so we drove to a casino two hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It finishes and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her we'll be home soon. Canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic. It's around midnight. So we enter the canyon and we're all pretty tired. To keep us talking we start telling stories, most of them creepy stories. This goes on for a while and it feels like time is passing in a haze. We pass this butte in the canyon and suddenly I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking, and then we pass the same butte again. This time I pointed out and my dad and uncle notice the time, it's 1 am, and we're still not home. So we all start to get a bit freaked out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention though time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon around 1.15 am and call my mom who is freaked out she hadn't heard from us. We still to this day have no idea where that extra 45 minutes or so went. Around 2006-ish I was driving flatbed, picked up a load of construction material, drywall, roofing, don't remember but it was pre-packaged in boxes and I remember having to use strap protectors on the load, in rural Tennessee, memory is foggy now but I wanna say it was between Memphis and Nashville but closer to the intersection of the MS, AL, DN state lines. Tarp required so I strapped everything down, tarped the load and left the shipper. About 5 miles down the road, in the middle of nowhere woods on a two-lane road, I noticed my tarp flapping in the wind. Found a wide shoulder and pulled over to fix it. I realized that I just flat did a shitty job tarping this load and decide to redo it on the side of the road. Undo all the bungee straps, drag the tarps off, roll them back up, climb up on the load and start unrolling the tarps again and I see a guy walking down the same side of the road I'm on, coming towards my truck. I don't think anything about it other than to keep an eye on him cause I'm in the middle of nowhere and continue what I'm doing. About the time I have tarps set in place and am climbing down to start hooking the bungee straps back on, this dude is getting close enough that I'm now paying more attention to him than I am to tarping my load. I grab my winch bar and set it on the trailer where I'm working just in case, 8 pound solid metal bar about 4 feet long tapered to a blunt point on one end and hollow on the other, used for tightening straps and chains etc. The guy gets to me and the first thing I notice is his hair. It's like a mullet but it's patchy as fuck. Like he tried to cut his own hair and had a seizure in the process and said fuck it good enough to party. The next thing I notice were his eyes, which I can only describe as off. Like they were clear, I didn't think he was drunk or high or anything. But it also gave me the distinct impression that the elevator didn't go all the way up. Clothes were dirty and not well maintained, with dirty white tennis shoes, cause I remember he didn't have laces on one shoe and the tongue was noticeably out of place. He stops by me, waits until I acknowledge him and just says I've got a long walk. I'm like yeah man, you do, we're in the middle of nowhere. Making it clear there's no ride to be had here. He nods, starts walking by me continuing on his way, stops at about the driver door on my truck and turns around, comes back to me and repeats himself. I've got a long walk. At this point I explain that I can't give him a ride, insurance and all that. Apologize for not being able to help him out, and he seems to accept this, turns around and leaves. I wait for him to get a little ways away from my truck and start working on finishing the tarp job. I still keep an eye on him and he's moving away from me. As I'm putting on the last of the bungee straps I look over to check where he's at and he's turned around heading back towards me, now about 100 yards in front of my truck and coming back my way. It looks like he's talking on a cell phone, has his hand up to his face and I can barely make out his mouth moving, his other hand waving like he's having a conversation with someone. I finish with the straps grab my winch bar, and I'm climbing into my truck as he's about 10 yards away now. Soon as I'm in the cab I lock the doors, and set the winch bar on the passenger seat just in case. I look at the guy and realize he's not talking on a phone, he's talking to his fucking hand and now I'm nervous, cause he doesn't look like he's having a nice pleasant chat, it looks more like an angry conversation. Crank the truck up put it in gear and just pull out, didn't look for traffic or anything. As I pass him he's just looking at me still holding his hand to his face with his dead ass look on his face just staring at me. Gave me the creeps. About the time I hit 5th or 6th gear I look in the mirror and there's no one there. 
not technically a truck driver but my cousin works at a truck stop in Kansas. She told me about some guy who parked his truck and got out. A woman got out of the passenger seat. It was kinda cold so the trucker was wearing a coat and hat. But the woman was wearing summer cloths. My cousin thought nothing of it and did her whole high welcome in. The trucker bought a coffee but the woman just stood there in the doorway. Now my cousin was freaked out. She didn't want to be rude but she was a teenage girl alone in a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Excuse me miss, do you need anything? She asked. Who are you talking to? The truck driver asked when he got to the checkout. The woman who got out of your truck? My cousin pointed but the woman had disappeared. She told me she had never seen a look of pure terror on a man's face. He just whispered a quiet oh no. Got his coffee and left. The woman did not get back into his truck and my cousin couldn't find her in the store. She says it was one of the most terrifying experiences she had ever had while on that job. Not technically a truck driver, but I used to work as a field technician in the oil industry, so I spent a lot of time driving through remote areas of Canada at odd hours. One very strange and eerie experience sticks with me. I was in either northeast BC or northwest Alberta, can't remember the exact location, driving late at night, when I noticed a very large black shape on the road in front of me. Thinking it was a moose, I stepped on the brakes, coming to a stop only a few feet from it. Despite being so close, and having my headlights shining directly on it, I still couldn't tell what I was looking at. It was vaguely the shape of a four-legged animal, but very big, probably about six feet tall. Aside from that it was completely featureless. I couldn't make out any details whatsoever, no shine from its eyes, nothing. And then I noticed there were more of them in the ditch on both sides of the road. Five or six or maybe more, all the same as the black shape on the road in front of me. None of them were moving. They didn't look like physical objects or living things. More like just large patches of absolute darkness. After I got over my shock, dread started to set in, and I drove around the thing on the road and sped off. I don't really believe this was a paranormal experience. I had been driving for 8 plus hours through the middle of the night, and I was exhausted. Most likely, it was a hallucination caused by lack of sleep and spending too long staring straight ahead into the dark. But it was still a very unsettling experience. Literally reposting my comment from another thread just like this. I work for a railroad. Not necessarily remote but sometimes it's just a conductor and engineer cruising along plus slash minus 10 miles per hour on very isolated, fairly wooded track. I've heard a few older guys mention something about a family or a man with a suitcase, something along those lines don't really remember, walking down the track with no concerns. Constant blowing of the horn, flashing of the lights etc just kept walking down the track. Then disappearing. Near Weatherly, Pennsylvania. I also experienced a pretty intense trip myself one night coming home from New Jersey. Saw my first dead body laying along the rail which in itself was kinda interesting. Then the only other part of my trip where we were required to run at a slow speed. I heard the craziest blood-curdling scream I have ever heard in my entire life. One of the nights I will probably remember until I retire. Not a truck driver but I've spent the past 4 years driving every day slash night for work. I was in a fairly rural part of Mississippi somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood, important note it's all two lane highway the 250 mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife told her there was high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats throughout the delta and I'd call her as soon as I made it to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck so I had ate dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky without inclement weather. I had driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck. Being a MS native I knew in July hail meant tornado. I pull off to the side, I'm in the middle of nowhere no lights to be seen no cars behind or in front of me, and start looking for the storm slash tornado I believe is approaching. I rolled the passenger window down and shined a bright flashlight off into the night. Nothing there. Turn to the driver's side and this guy has his face pushed against the glass. Grinning from ear to ear. I screamed and he was gone. I slammed the truck in drive and took off. We have all the time running cameras on our trucks. I got to the first safe place to stop and called my wife. I didn't want to scare her so I didn't mention the guy or the hailstorm. I did however pull the SD card and check the cameras. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. I've always played it off as my imagination. 
I will say I don't drive through the delta in the dark anymore if I don't absolutely have to.